All right, here we go. I've tried to shoot this video three times now, and I'm finally going to shoot it no matter what interruptions I have. Hey guys, I'm Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com, Gary Dean Detailing. I'm um, working on a 21 foot Malibu luxury sport ski boat. It's a really nice boat. Um, the interior is not bad, however, it just needs some good cleaning. I do a good thorough vacuum and scrub everything down, get rid of some of this mold. You can see that. No problem. The gel coat is actually in awesome shape. I was here a few years ago and polished this thing out, and he's done a great job of keeping it up. I'm pretty impressed. I never, ever see people really maintaining their stuff and this is it's really in great shape so pretty impressed so got the front end here a little dirty bird bombs that kind of thing but i'm gonna straighten it out i brought the uh elkie today got all my my stuff most importantly i have coffee this is the uh, Ozark Trail Cup that everybody raves about. It actually works really, really well for $9.97 at Walmart over the uh, crazy price of the Yeti. Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Just happy I have coffee today. But you can see the shape it's in. It's not bad. Uh, the plan is to do just a light polish on the outside. I'm going to hit it with my Solitaire. That's in my Marine line. And then, like I said, vacuum and scrub down the interior and that's it. So probably be here for, I don't know, three or four hours. Trailer's in good shape. We're good. So without further ado, I am just going to get to work. So we'll see you in a bit. All right, guys, I hadn't planned on doing a full on detailing video on this boat, but there's a few points I want to make and I think it will help some people. So I'm always looking to help somebody if I can. So like I said, 20 foot, 21 foot, Malibu ski boat. It's a big one. What I always recommend you do first, if you're going to do a boat, is vacuum everything out. I vacuumed, I, I removed all the cushions that I could take out of the boat that weren't on uh, fixed hinges, uh, as you can see. So all this bench area, that bench area, and all the front bow area. I removed all those from the boat. Um, and I vacuumed all inside, all the cracks, crevices, uh, all the storage compartments, everything. This boat has a ton of storage. Generally, ski boats do. Uh, there's also this engine area. There's carpet inside both sides here. And I went ahead and vacuumed all that. Now, the reason you want to vacuum, you can see I'm sweating to death. The reason you want to vacuum first is because when you go get in the interior wet and you get the carpet wet, it's going to make all of that debris and all everything that's sitting in the carpet fibers it's gonna make it really hard to remove it when it's wet plus you don't even though it's a, a wet dry vac you're using most likely you're using the rigid five horse horsepower portable vac that I recommend um, if there's a filter in there you do not want to use it on water because you'll just damage the filter it doesn't make any sense so you're being counterproductive so don't get uh, the vacuum wet don't suck up water when there's a filter in there so I, I just make it a general rule that i don't suck up water with a vacuum anyway so anyway vacuum first remove the remove all the cushions you can get out of the boat and do those outside the boat just makes it easier to get to them and then vacuum first do a very thorough vacuum before you do anything else uh, or you're going to have a lot of difficulty trying to remove all the crap from the uh, carpet later on uh, it makes it very hard to vacuum so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the vacuum out of the boat. Um, I am going to do all of the, I'm going to clean and condition all of the uh, cushions that I've got sitting outside the boat. Those and these. Um, I'm going to get those all done, cleaned, and then sit them out of the way. And then I'm going to start in, I'll get the engine bay done. Uh, and again, I'm just going to do a top side detail. It's pretty clean. Just needs to be wiped down and stuff, all the jams and stuff like that. And then get that shut down. And then I'm going to start focusing on getting these uh, in all this interior vinyl 
mildew free which shouldn't be a big deal um, and here's the thing I got another video up about soft scrub I use soft scrub on the vinyl that has mildew on it because it has bleach in it there's a very little bit of bleach in it and it actually will it'll bleach out the color in the mold now tiger's blood from detailjuice.com will do the exact same thing except for it doesn't have bleach in it so it's not going to make the mold go away per se like the color of it uh so it will clean it up and that kind of stuff prep it for your uh you know whatever you're going to use to seal it up and in this case i'm going to use transform dressing this is a not a low end detail but definitely not a high end detail uh, so i'm going to be using transform dressing to get this thing all protected uh, if it were a high end detail i'd be using aqua blocker which is what i would have recommended however the budget just wasn't there for this one uh, but anyway i'm going to get this all straightened out okay so before i get started on anything else gonna get you put right here for a second I'm going to uh, I'm gonna use some soft scrub on the areas of concern for the mildew and I want to do that now while I'm outside cleaning the uh, the rest of the cushions because because I want the bleach to have a little bit of time in the Sun and I'm literally gonna put this on my hand just like so I'll rub it on the on the areas that need it always wear rubber gloves always wrap it up is the answer for sure always wrap it up protection is key so just lube her down literally just cake it on let it sit in the Sun for a little bit Like I said, I have another video I did about soft scrub. It's good stuff. So, hopefully you'll notice in a future shot that it'll lighten all this stuff up. So it won't look as bad. Now, I don't use it everywhere. I just use it where it's needed. Because bleach is tough stuff and uh, it's just not needed everywhere we just got to get these stains out is the problem so I'm gonna use tiger's blood everywhere else hopefully you're getting a good shot or a good view of what's going on here uh, I just got the front cushions all done and now I'm about to start working on the rear cushions but I wanted to show you how I tackle the cushions Notice, rubber gloves. I have Tiger's Blood diluted 50-50 in here. It is a little bit overkill at 50-50. However, it was already pre-mixed and I'm not going to worry about it. In fact, I may end up putting some water in there to do the uh, interior parts. But for this demonstration, I'm going to use Hard Bristle Brush. Uh, vinyl on boats is pretty tough now I tried to use my boar's hair brush this guy right here wasn't quite taking out all the dirt and grime I needed it to take out so I had to resort to a more aggressive situation but the key here is that I did try the least aggressive method possible first you always want to err on the side of caution and do as little as minimally aggressive as possible so anyway I had to resort to this that's where we're at so unfortunately I didn't bring a hose uh, or a sprayer so I'm dealing with theirs and it has no rubber gasket so we're wasting water anyway I got it pinched over there so what I do and you do one cushion at a time you don't want to do like pre-soak them all 
and you want to do this in the shade. You don't want to do it in the sun because you don't want any cleaner, whether it's mine or someone else's, to dry on the surface, especially in the sunlight or direct sunlight. It's just a no-no. So anyway, so you got your dirty, dirty uh, cushion. Spray some tiger's blood all over that bad boy. Doesn't need any dwell time. And just go to town, scrubbing it. Do all the sides. Lots of dirt and grime gets stuck in the sides. Be careful when you're scraping the uh, vinyl on the uh, on the floor or on the uh, ground. Don't do it if you can avoid it which is why I'm propping it up on that hose. But give it a good scrub down. Be careful. Grab your hose. Give her a good rinse. Not everything is going to come off. Now you can get more aggressive with it. The only thing more aggressive gets is damage to the uh, surface you're working on. So, that is as clean as I am gonna go with this thing. First of all, it sits outside. It's gonna get dirty again. Beyond that, it's, a, it's an older used boat. And I'm happy that there's no dirt just sitting on the top anywhere. It's clean, a few stains, still good to go. Now I'm going to put this in the sun to dry and then I'll be applying transform dressing uh, diluted, I don't know, about 33% to 67%-ish. So one part transform dressing to two parts water to protect the interior of this boat. What it's going to do is it's going to last a little bit longer than the uh, one to three dilution for interiors of cars and that kind of thing. Um, it's also going to penetrate the surface because it has a penetrant in it that soaks in whatever you apply it to, which is why it's awesome for rubber on tires. Uh, and it's going to stay in there and protect and seal up all the pores in the whatever you put it on. So it's going to be a little bit more protection than the one to three ratio. Like I said, I'm going to use it one part product to two parts water and uh, get everything nice and protected. But that is how I recommend that you clean interior panels on boats uh vinyl specifically and that's it i got three more to do and then i'll be jumping inside and i'll show you what the soft scrub is doing so we'll be right back on when i've got lawn people doing lawn work when i'm trying to detail something it's such a pain i hate it so if you're a potential customer looking to get some uh work done do not please do not call and schedule me on your lawn day. So five million mini clips on this, I got to patch together because all of these interruptions. Anyway, you can see how not nasty these areas that the soft scrub is on are now. I am going to treat it one more time with the soft scrub. I don't know if you remember the seat was bad, this top area was bad. This was the really the worst part right here, and it's coming along. Uh, this was really bad. Um, I'm gonna strip it down real quick, just clean it all off, and then I'll reapply it and let it sit while I go up to the bow area and work on the front. So this came. Oh wow, this came really nice. Notice all the stains are out. Got a little bit left here, but I'm gonna straighten that out. No problem. Got some some left there. Got to get that all out. No worries. I am on it. It is hot. <laughs> so I'm just I'm in here. I spray it down. I go to town. Take my hard bristle brush. Make sure you get all the cracks and crevices because in here will be a lot of nasty dirt and grime. Inside the piping you get a lot of dirt and grime in there.
you just always want to be careful with a hard bristle, bristle brush. Just make sure you're not overdoing it. This was a spot that had a lot of that mildew all over it. You want to make sure you rinse all that uh, soft scrub out and away because it could uh, potentially, I've never had an issue, but I would imagine potentially it could uh, make the stitching brittle. So. It's also worth me mentioning that uh, this last night I confirmed with uh, my client on the detail for today and uh, he sent me a text back with specific instructions on what he want me to focus on and it was the interior but my point even mentioning that is if you're a detailer and you're trying to make money at this your job is to make the customer happy not to make yourself happy you could spend days weeks months years working on something to make your hobbyist mentality happy but when you make the customer happy not only are you successful do you become successful whatever you want to say but you're making money because that's what's important you take what that customer says in your consultation and you make sure that whatever they're looking for you know within reality within the realm of reality obviously because we know perfection is not reality I preach that every day as long as you're making sure you focus on what that customer wants, you're always going to come out on top. Now there's a, you know, there's that person here or there that just isn't pleasable and you can't, can't please everybody. But what you can do is put out your maximum effort and do the best that you can and that's what most people want is your maximum effort while you're paying attention you see how hot I am I'm sweating to death I need to sweat some of this weight off got a little bit uh, pudgy in the past year uh, haven't been detailing as much it's getting uh, nicer outside I'm gonna start focusing on uh, more detailing now. Uh, it's just so hot in the summertime. That's the problem. It's hot in the summertime here. You can hardly get anything done outside without sweating to death. If you're doing an interior on a car or whatever, I find myself dripping sweat all over it, being counterproductive. Um, I've been been pretty fortunate. I'm uh, I own several businesses, a uh, couple of which are not even in, involving detailing, so I stay pretty busy. But detailing is definitely my passion. I love it, and I like to do it as much as possible. But I have uh, damn near had heat stroke about three times since I've been here in Florida. So I'm susceptible to it. So I try to not overdo it when it's super hot out. If I go down, it's not a good deal. So make sure you get all the cracks and crevices you can. Don't just get the outside because when people sit in seats, they move around. They sometimes stir up dirt and it comes back out and they're like, why don't you clean this area? Why don't you clean that area? Well, you say, I did. And they're just like, well, it doesn't look like it. And ain't nobody got no time for none of that. So just do it. Suck it up, buttercup, and get her done. 
That's all you got to do. See what I'm doing here? Taking this brush and some tiger's blood and just cleaning out this area. Nothing fancy. Just getting all this gunk out of here. It's my lug nut brush. Because it looked kind of nasty in there. And, uh, you know, again, the customer will definitely see this area, but I really tackled this area because it was bugging me. But again, look, boom. How long did that take me? Not very long. Makes me feel better. It will make the customer feel better. And that is all that matters. So, I am getting her done. Anything the customer's going to see, you want to take care of. Anything the customer mentions, you got to take care of. It's all about the customer. Don't worry about what you're doing to please yourself if it's going to affect the uh, the job and how fast it gets done or your bottom line make the customer happy and you'll be happy that's really my biggest pit peeve on a lot of detailers is I see them spending all day long on stuff that the customer doesn't even care about Customer doesn't care. I mean, even for the most part, customer doesn't care what products you're using. Customer doesn't care what process you're using. Customer cares whether or not you can get the job that they want done, done, or aid them in understanding the job that they think they want done, done, in a timely manner and they want the cost to be justifiable now notice how I put that I did not say they want it to be cheap I did not say they want it to be in inexpensive what I did say is they want the cost to be justifiable what I mean by that people is if you can make the customer see the value in what you're doing, they will pay whatever price they can afford. That's the bottom line. So that's important. Make your customer see the value in what, you, what you're doing. And all is well. I know this video is probably getting a little bit long, but Everybody always says you, they want to see a uh, time lapse video or whatever. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put you through this whole thing. I'm going to, all of this is going to be in the video. You're going to watch me do all of this. So, that's where we're at. I'm hurrying up as I can to switch the water. Ugh. I got all this left to do. And I'll jump to the front, so I'm gonna cut you now till I get to the front, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, it's pretty flipping hot around here. I hate working in the heat. Hate it. Y'all know what soft scrub is, don't you? It's toilet bowl cleaner. So it'll be in the household cleaning section. I generally buy it from Walmart. Works well. It's cheap. Um, I only use it on boats though. I don't use it on anything else and I only 
use it on vinyl interiors. I won't use it on anything but boat vinyl. Well, that's not necessarily true. Like awnings and stuff, if they're white, just remember it's got bleach in it. So <coughs> it'll stain whatever you put it on if you leave it there. That's why it's best to uh, only use it on white colored stuff. Whew. Oh man. So that's that. Tiger's blood is good stuff. I can't possibly use it enough. It's my, uh, it's my entertainment for myself. I like to sing stupid songs. Remember when I said about the cracks and crevices, get in there as best you can. Your finger is your best butt. I say that a lot on car details, but I mean it. Like on motorcycles, everything. Your finger is your best brush. Oh God, that feels good. Oh, it's so hot out here. All right, went and got some lunch. Now I'm back and the floor is still wet. It's got some debris in it. So the last thing I'm going to do is do a quick vacuum. But you can see how way better everything looks. Still got a bunch of uh, mildew here. I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, it's probably not going to go away anyway. Um, I did take extra time to make sure that all the soft scrub was out of the cracks and crevices. Um... Yep, I gotta clean the windows. I'm gonna wipe down that wakeboard tower like I mentioned before. It's got some nastiness. And then just wipe down the dash and stuff like that. But what I'm gonna do now is he's the owner specifically requested I focus on the engine bay. So what I did was I did my top side engine bay detail. We basically just got everything on the top side really clean. Uh, I'm gonna spray some uh, transform dressing on it diluted uh, this well the same dilution I'm getting ready to do on the exterior which is uh, one part product two parts water I got that mixed up in this bottle right here so when you do this you literally just uh, make sure it's all mixed up and go to town this is going to protect everything and make it look awesome. And you got to get all the hoses and that kind of thing. Try to get all the way around those. And that's it. So looks blue now, but it will go away and look awesome. I'm going to do the same thing in here. You don't want to overdo it. You're just trying to give it a clean look. That's what's important. Um, I don't even wipe this down. I just literally spray it on and that's it. So get everything that you can see. Don't worry so much about what you can't see because this is only for pretty and it does hydrate, but as long as you get it on the hoses, you're in good shape. So that's that. That's my engine bay detail. I'll show you the rest in just a bit. Still got to wash the exterior of the boat and get it polished real quick. I'm not going to do anything fantastic on the outside. Like I mentioned before, it's all about this detail is all about the interior and just uh, getting some good solid quality protection on the outside, but because my solitaire from my marine line, which is a all-in-one cleaner wax kind of deal, uh, because it works so fast, I'm just going to get out the polisher and buzz all of the exterior gel coat with it. 
uh, wipe it off and then call it a day. That's it. So I've got the captain's chair here. We've got a microfiber towel and I'm gonna spray it down and wipe it in. This is not complicated. Turn the chair. There we go. Don't have to be stingy with this stuff. Just spray it on the surface. Wipe it in. This gives good, good uh, UVA and UVB protection. So it's going to protect from sun damage. Now this dilution, like I mentioned before, is stronger than uh, the interior dilution that I generally recommend, which is 25% product, 75% water. And that's it. So the captain's chair is all protected. I'm gonna go ahead and do the dashboard and all that stuff too. I like to spray it directly on the surface. Um, I don't know that that is any better than putting it on the towel and wiping it in. You know, again, I go by what works best for me, not necessarily what technical data on a piece of paper says. Um, I get great results spraying it on and wiping it in. So that's what I do. Again, if this were a higher end detail or if I could have sold them on Aquablocker, I would have definitely done that. Just wasn't in the budget. And that's okay. Is what it is. <clears throat> I did my due diligence to uh, tell them about it. And uh, couldn't make it happen that time. But no worries. Transform dressing is definitely a solid option see how nice that leaves the surface see the difference I don't know if you can see the difference between this where I, I have applied the transform dressing and how dry it is up here can you see that so I'll apply it there swipe it in I mean if that's not a testament to the hydration properties uh, in the transform dressing, I don't know what is. Works really well. I love it. Customers love it, and that's what matters. So that's transform dressing from detailjuice.com. Boom, baby. I really like this mount that I'm using for my GoPro Hero session. I'm able to move it in different directions and clip it to whatever I want to clip it to. Works awesome. Just like that. Spray it on. Don't be stingy with it. it in and we are golden baby make sure you get your cracks and crevices and that kind of thing there we go good deal 
Que gourde Odile Get inside the cracks, around the piping, everything. Not just what the sun will hit, because this is going to protect everything. So, ow, just hit my head on the freaking bimini. It happens. All right, I'm close to being done. And I wanted to show you the uh, engine compartment. Notice how nice and black that looks. And all this, it's not quite dry, but remember when I sprayed it on, it was all blue. Now it's nice and uh, dark, got a little gloss to it. I could have diluted that uh, a little more, but I was already using that dilution uh, on the rest of the boat, so. I figured I'd just stick with that. But anyway, transform dressing all over the engine bay. After I wiped everything down with Tiger's blood and got it nice and clean. All right, peeps. Whew, I'm done with the interior. Now it's time to uh, knock out the exterior of this bad boy. I got all the cushions put back. They're all cleaned in condition. Everything looks nice. You guys saw the engine, uh, the transmission down here, and the uh, engine compartment down there. Cockpit looks all nice and clean. Passenger area looks good. I am sweating to death still. Uh, I picked up all the big de debris and stuff on the carpets. Again, I'm going to offer to come back and vacuum it out. The uh, lawn guys are part of this problem. I got it all vacuumed out. They came through. A lot of the debris landed uh, as they were vacuuming or as they were mowing. But whatever. It is what it is. I'll take responsibility. It doesn't matter. Um, again, it's about going above and beyond for your customers and uh, making sure that they're happy. And if if this comes down to me just making a trip back over here to vacuum this thing out again it's worth it just to make them happy um, i have done this boat before uh, it's been several years i mentioned that before and uh, he's done a great job of keeping it up and you know it's it's not it's something that small is not worth losing a customer over especially when he's probably going to tell me don't worry about it um, but i'm going to offer to come back over here and vacuum this thing out in a couple days when the floor is dry so anyway, time to get on the exterior of this boat. All right, guys, you're probably gonna think I'm crazy, but wait, you probably already do. Um, I'm actually doing a waterless wash on this boat with some Magnum motorcycle juice, straight up. Um, just talked to the uh, the owner and uh, told him what I, you know, what I, what I did to the interior and he was like well just give me you know a good wash and a little bit of protection on the outside and i'm happy and i'm like well i was gonna polish it with my solitaire he was like no 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 let's not spend any more time on it i don't want to spend any more money it looks fine we'll do a bigger one as it oxidizes i was like okay but anyway as you can see i'm all the way down to the gas cap right here and I wanted to show you I just pulled the cap off and it is nasty here and there and so in order to fix that I just sprayed some magnum on this towel I will grab some more magnum motorcycle juice I want to be careful not to get any of this inside the uh, gas tank um, I figure that would be obvious however I get asked some questions that sometimes I wonder what, how people 
brush their teeth and eat like should be common sense I know it's crazy but the point was make sure you don't get any magnum or anything else in the gas tank if you're cleaning around that um, again I'm just gonna spray some magnum on that you got a good view of what I'm doing I am going to man I love this setup the uh, GoPro hero session and this little adapter with a clamp it's like a little tripod kind of thing with a clamp on it I can clamp it on anything I want I love it so anyway I'm getting all the nastiness out of this gas cap because ain't nobody got no time for no nastiness you know what I mean all good ready to go back on no residue anywhere she be good to go said waterless wash with magnum magnum motorcycle juice is not just a motorcycle product it is an amazing cleaner shiner and protector it's got a little bit of uh, the cleaning agent from my infinite purpose cleaner it has a little bit of the polymer from infinite use detail juice and polymer from the juice boost it also has the cleaning agent in it from the brand new juice boost so it has what i'm calling salt shocker technology which is pretty awesome so in the winter time up north with all the salt on the roads this is going to break down the salt far faster than ever before and i can tell you i have uh <laughs> I, I test my stuff against pretty much everything on the market that's worth having um, per the hype I should say and that's what most of it is is just hype um, but uh, my stuff just definitely uh, it, it excels every time and if it doesn't we continue to build until it does so anyway waterless car wash with magnum motorcycle juice you can see how shiny and amazing it looks that interior looks awesome you can see how dirty the back end is man I love this thing love it love it put you right there and I'll show you use as much as you want here's the deal gel coat is far harder than clear coat i am not worried about swirl marks this customer is not worried about swirl marks and that's the bottom line so this is the perfect situation to get the boat clean not to have a ton of residual water especially since i just did the interior and make the customer happy this guy is going to be ecstatic super happy with the job i know what he expected of me i'm giving him more than what he is paying me to do and that is what the customer wants they want to see the value in what you do regardless of the cost they want to see that value so good wipe down just do a little hand buff job and so with the magnum I'm cleaning shining and protecting all in the same kind of deal no need for three different steps on this particular job I'm able I'm able to save the customer some money save me some time because I got other things to do and there we go 
just like that, she'd be clean. Notice how clean and shiny it is now compared to how nasty it was before. Now it's time to do this side and I'll bring you around for the uh, final shot because after this, I'm done. All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I am all done with this boat and I'm going to do something in the next clip that I have never done before, but I think would be very beneficial to those of you who use my products and those of you who don't. So I'm going to do a cost to profit analysis on this detail that I showed you what I did. I showed you a lot of how I did, how I did it, uh, spend some time with you on this detail. And I'm about to go over it now with you just to show you what it looks like now that I'm done compared to the shape it was in when I got here. And like I said, cost to profit analysis is important. Uh, you should be doing those uh, as far as just an estimate of one before you even show up to the job, before you even quote the job. You should have the numbers in your head. And I'll tell you, um, I watched this show called The Profit and Marcus Limonis, he owns Camping World and lots of other businesses. He always says, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. So if for any reason you don't know how much the products that you're using are costing you to use them, and you don't know how that affects your bottom line, you're not doing it right. That's the bottom line. So if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business, period. I'm, I believe in that wholeheartedly and I know every number to everything that has to do with my business. So know your numbers, know your cost to profit ratios. And like I've mentioned before, your cost in the detailing industry uh, to do a job, to show up there for wear and tear, gas, product, everything, the water that you drink while you're on the job, the lunch that you eat while you're there, well, lunch is that's a separate deduction really um yeah foods I, I you know you could factor in snacks but i wouldn't factor in like a whole lunch unless you want to i mean you can there's nothing wrong with that but i think that that's a little bit different um but yeah everything it costs you to do a job i mean i, I would factor in the water that you drink um and that kind of thing uh, the products you use the gas the wear and tear all of that kind of thing whether you're using a generator pressure washer, all that stuff. Um, you know, how many times you get to use your microfiber towels. I mean, you know, factor all that stuff in, but the way I feel about it, I feel like your cost to profit ratio should be no more than 10% of the total job dollar um, should be spent on the cost. So if a job is $1,000, uh, you should spend no more than a hundred to get it done. Or if a job is a hundred dollars, you should spend no more than ten dollars to get that done. So you should always be putting ninety percent uh, in your pocket to uh, to say that you're doing it right. So anyway, this uh, boat is all done. It looks amazing. All I did was a waterless wash with Magnum motorcycle juice. It has two tanks, one on this side, one on the other side. I pulled the uh, gas cap off, clean back there, uh, clean the behind of, of both gas caps on both sides. I got the interior all nice and clean, all nice and protected. The engine bay is clean and protected. All the windows wiped inside and out. I wiped down the wakeboard tower, the bimini top, the frame for that. Oh, the stainless is all clean. Looks amazing. I know this video is long, but I think it's important. You know, people rely on me and look up to me to help them in their detailing endeavors. And I find that my niche is helping the, the guy who's just getting into it or, you know, even the guy who wants to improve what they're doing 
to make more money and get better results and save time. I mean, those three things are important to me. So um, notice everything is nice and clean, nice and protected, nice and shiny, and that's that. So uh, the next clip will be how much did I charge, how much did it cost me to do the job, and how long did it take? So here we go. What up? All right, we're back. Uh, well, I should say I'm in a different, completely different situation, but I wanted to do that cost to profit analysis on the boat that I detailed yesterday uh, for you. I generally don't do this. I generally don't talk about how much I made on a job, um, but I feel like if you're going to get anything out of really learning from me uh, how to better your business, I have to share with you uh, things like this. So I want you guys to benefit from the things that I say and do. I mean, after all, what's the point uh, of me putting out all this effort for this channel if I'm not digging deep and showing you guys the deep down nitty gritty dirty part, uh, you know, the, the, the most important things. So uh, the boat that I detailed, the 21 foot Malibu, I charged a guy $400 to do the job. Now, it took me, I was there for about four and a half hours. So that's a pretty good, um, you know, the, the time and the money, I mean, definitely worked out. Uh, when I'm when I'm doing a job, uh, I don't necessarily I have a dollar amount that I I keep in the back of my head that I want to try to you know put the package together and and get um, and sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't but you don't want to charge by the hour because the people uh, that you're dealing with they don't understand what it's going to take and and they don't want to have to worry about, hey, you know, you estimate 10 hours, but what if it takes 15 hours? Am I going to have to pay that extra money um, on top of the what your estimate was? Well, that's not good business to change the price uh, unless, it, you know, you've already negotiated that in where uh, it, it would be acceptable uh, if you haven't seen the job or whatever. But Changing the price is bad. You generally want to shoot them straight, shoot them a price that's a little bit over what you think it's going to be, and then um, you know if if it takes you longer, you're good. But the bottom line is, I charge them four hundred dollars for to clean the boat up, uh, focus on the interior, and then do the exterior. Um, as you saw, I just did a waterless wash with Magnum Motorcycle Juice on the exterior, uh, and then I did a full-on interior detail. Vacuumed it all out, pulled all the cushions, scrubbed them all down with Tiger's Blood, detailed the interior. I got everything really saturated and coated with uh, Transform dressing. I cleaned the engine compartment. I mean, I really did a thorough job on the interior. Um, cleaned all the exterior glass, that kind of thing. But then Magnum Motorcycle Juice uh, cleaned everything up and it also left some protection behind. He was far less concerned about the exterior than he was on the interior. So 400 bucks, four and a half hours, pretty good deal. I'm going to take you off this tripod now and I'm going to show you the cost to profit analysis that I have uh, set up. So I wrote it all down. Uh, it, I used the perfect soap and these are all listed at uh, retail prices. So this is what you would pay on detailjuice.com retail price. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys wait for sales and that kind of thing. So it's going to be even cheaper than this. But Perfect soap, I use a half of an ounce that comes out to 59 cents. Uh, Tiger's Blood Cleaner, I used eight ounces of that, uh, came out to $5. Uh, Magnum Motorcycle Juice, I used a full 16 ounce bottle of uh, MMJ straight up. I did not dilute it for the waterless wash, I used it straight out of the bottle. Uh, that's the most polymer, the most cleaning agent, uh, all of that uh, straight out of the bottle, no dilution. That retails for $13.99. Transform dressing, I uh, used about five ounces of that mixed with water, uh, and that's $9.37 at retail price. Uh, I also used some soft scrub, as you saw. I used about 10 ounces of that. It's roughly $3 for a 24 ounce bottle at Walmart. 
Uh, so we'll say around $1.50 for that. And I estimate my travel, it was about five miles away. The travel, the gas, the wear and tear on my equipment and the car, all of that stuff. And then uh, the three bottled waters I drank while I was there, that's around $6. That gives us a total of $36.45. So that is a cost to profit uh, analysis. So well, this, this particular list here would just be my cost. So you take that $36.45 and you do what I have been telling you to do and make sure that your cost to profit is not more than 10% of the entire job. In this case, it worked out very well. I charged $400, it cost me less than $40 to do the job. Uh, so I'm well within that 10% uh, of the total job cost to do the job, which is good. So basically, I made 90% profit on that deal to put in my pocket. Nothing wrong with that. that, that's good, that's what you want. So always make sure that your cost to profit ratio, uh, the cost needs to be inside of 10%. If you do that, you're golden. You'll definitely be making money. Uh, so anyway, thanks guys for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you love it. If you don't love it, well, whatever. Um, but I just want to tell you guys that I appreciate each and every one of you guys that take the time to listen to me babble every day. Um, I got a whole lot of new videos coming up soon. I've got a full list of things that I, that I want to shoot videos on. I've got new ideas every day. I get new suggestions every day. People uh, are right on top of, hey, can you do a video on this, do a video on that. If you've got any requests, please let me know. Uh, check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It's a group on Facebook where we talk about only my products and processes and you know things that have to do with the whole detailjuice.com uh, brand uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, I also you know share you know personal things that are going on in my life just so that you guys uh, stay connected with me and what's going on. And um, if you've got any questions, please reach out 813-846-4406 if I can help you in your detailing endeavors. I am more than willing to do that. I cannot help you if you don't use the number. Um, if you call me, please leave me a voicemail or send me a text message. Uh, I screen all my calls. It's extremely difficult to answer every phone call right when they come in. However, if you leave me a detailed voicemail, I can get back to you. I'll give you a call as soon as I can or send me a text. I can reply immediately or also uh, find me on Facebook and I can you know, communicate with you, with you there via Facebook Messenger or whatever you want. Lots of ways to reach me. Again, I can't help you unless you reach out and I want to help you better yourself, better your business. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.